Are you a coder who gets rejected based on no practical experience or because others have a strong LinkedIn personal brand and you don't? Your coaching institute will hate me for doing this. But I welcome you to Code to Career 30 Days Challenge where I have chosen these 5 total strangers out of my LinkedIn contacts and have taken up the challenge to help them go from jobless or underpaid to well paid job that too without additional degrees and certifications in the next 30 days. If you are a coder and wants to get a well paid job, this is your golden chance to experience real project implementation from scratch that gets you a well paid job and builds your LinkedIn personal brand and also resume for absolutely free. So why just watch? Get into our WhatsApp community to experience this. Link is in the description. Now let's get started. I'll start with any questions that you have, then I will uh, top it up with any gaps that I see with respect to your understanding. So anybody has any questions, then it would be good. So Ajay, Anirudh, Ananda, we can be on camera, it would be great. So any study that you have done, you understood something, but still you feel there is a gap. Because I can say something, but if it is not still filling the gaps that you feel you have, then it is of no use, right? So this is exclusively something where I can tell few things, but still the issue will be there where you understood or you did not understand and there is still a gap. So Shubankar, is everything new to you? Yes. Sir. Any issue with your camera or something? Can, can you be on camera if possible? Chaitanya. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job, book a one on one call with me. Link is in the description. Yeah, Shubankar. Any specific question or you, you, you absolutely don't have anything that you know about this? I don't have much idea regarding this. Too. Okay, fine. Ajay? I have like uh, how the packet um, goes and the request comes back. Like uh, overall idea I have in depth uh, identified. Okay, Ananda. Yeah, please please speak up. Like, what's your understanding? So that yeah, same thing. So if we uh, started to send a, uh, some commands like set temperatures and all, it should be go propagate through the different functions and. Uh, and give the acknowledgement, right? So, what are all the APIs it should uh, manipulate? Those kind of questions I have in that file. So, but but file file fault stru fault structure, uh, it got somehow I got in some basic ideas since uh, we worked on some of the TCP sockets. So it is somehow similar to that. But uh, the uh, as I told the APIs, what are all the APIs I should have to use? So those kind of still. I have the doubt. And also this is the HTTP. Yes, I am very new to this. So I don't know the basics and yeah. Okay. Yeah, anyone, any specific questions, Sagar? Please be on camera. May I be requesting you for multiple times. Yes. So reason why uh, you hide just... behind cameras.
Ja, hallo. Guys, in, are you also in meetings that you are always silent and you don't speak up? Anirudh Sagar. Okay, Aditya is traveling, so he cannot join. I know, yeah, Aditya, I know, Anirudh, okay, fine. So let us start with the basic terminology called server. We will go with the pure noun form. Something which serves. The very rudimentary or very basic example of a hotel server. The example is very, very bad. But it's like a hotel server. That you request something, the server gets to you. So that's the simplest thing that a server can have. This kind of hardware with an intelligence provided by the software so that when somebody requests a kind of service, the server can provide. Typically in our case, let us assume for a moment and let us also think that the roles of server and client can change for easy understanding. So that you, th you look at something. If you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job book a one-on-one -on -one call with me link is in the description like a thermostat at the end and also the phone or something your user whichever is the interaction also working as a server and client i will i can provide something but i need something simple simple uh, analogy which action will I take under what context entirely defines which functionality I will invoke. If somebody is asking something and if I have that information, I become a server. If I have to ask something, then I become a client. Is, is this framework clear to everyone? I have something I can give. I need something I will ask. That time I am a client. When I am giving, I am a server. Now, what happened, like, you need to go and look back few few years, almost 20, 30 years back, when people had this idea of distributed system and the, and the thing of distributed system has come. Otherwise, wh what was happening, let us say if there is one module, like you have this uh, JSON module and you have a HTTP code, both are in the same code piece, when I create a final binary, the functionality which is there for JSON, processing of the JSON data, and the functionality so-called HTTP is part of the same binary. That time, I can have a very direct call. Code within a system can have a direct call. But off late, what people understood is, once this kernel user space and kernel thing has happened, People devise something called as process. You call it process, thread, task, doesn't matter. The interaction between these two processes started happening, which gave rise to something called as inter-process communication. One of the simplest inter-process communication is called pipe. How many of you know pipe? Unix pipes. How many of you know that? Type me in the chat box. Okay. Chaitanya knows. So it's, it's one of the very, very primitive thing saying that I have two file descriptors, read and write. I will write to the right file descriptor and the other entity or the other process will read from the read file descriptor. That is why if you see a shell programming, I will say ls slash and cat something or whatever. Both are two different processes from the kernel perspective. Everything within the same system doing all these things, life was very happy until the advent of internet. Internet has broken every other thought process that people had with respect to communication between processes. Now what has happened? The processes now got geographically distributed. 
Is this making clear? Earlier, the processes were in the same computer. Yes. Even before that, it was the same binary. And if you take operating system, the early, early operating system like DOS, when something happens in the kernel, the whole system crashes because there was nothing like user space, kernel space demarcation. There is nothing like process where it has its own operational memory. When a process dies, it's only that the kernel knows that something, some execution entity has gone out of scope. These kind of things were not there. The early days. What, what has happened? The moment user space, kernel space has come, process have come, People were happy. They were communicating between each other. There were IPCs like shared memory, pipes, fuse, all those things. With the advent of internet, people understood that I can start communicating not only with a process which is there inside me or inside the same computer or device. I can also talk with a process that is physically far away from me in an entirely different system. Till now, are you clear? Is this making sense? And this is what, this is how actually everything has happened. This is what you need to understand. There are books actually, if you go and read uh, um, the rise of Unix and all those things there, it, it's all history. And when you read, you will really appreciate that how technology actually evolved. And it will make you a very, very matured professional. It will make you understand that what really works at core and how all these top level things like JavaScript, that they are actually nothing. The core fundamentals of computer science and electronics, when you go right, you will see how really things play at the low level. And there is one person, uh, if you say, I, I occasionally engage not occasionally, whenever I see his post, I engage. His, call, his, his name is Brendan Coley. How many of you saw that? He works for a computer and uh, he, he has his own computer, uh, own industry and he does this uh, storage devices and all those things. There is a operating, there are operating systems that, that took birth but did not see the light of the day. But there are operating systems which have seen the light of the day but used very, very advanced. How many of you know Plan 9? Did you anytime he heard about plan nine? You need to go and check plan nine and you will see that it's one of the best operating systems ever written and written by the make creators of C. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. So what has happened when Physically, devices got separated. The rules that were used or the tools, let me say not rules, the tools. The tools that were used to communicate between processes like uh, pipe, like uh, shared memory, everything went for a toss because they were not built with an intention that the processes are distance apart. They were built with the intention, intention that the processes are there under the guidance or under the leadership of one kernel. Internet came, everything went for a toss. They, there were attempts to use pipe and all those things across the system, but nothing worked out. At that point of time, when Unix was made public, Unix at some point of time was always at and proprietary stuff. At later point of time, it was also made public to universities. Berkeley University got a copy of Unix and they created something called as sockets. And there's a strange story also behind it. The moment you, you see a socket, what is the common socket terminology we use? Plugs, sockets, wire, wire sockets and all those things, right? Literally, they gave a name to that. An electrical inlet or outlet where you plug in a wire, they literally visualized that a socket is like that. How? When you connect to a socket, you have a physical wire. And that's what gave rise to many, many protocols also. How many of you know CSMA CD? Or at least heard of CSMA CD? Type me in the chat box.
ओके वॉट डज इट मीन सी एस एम ए सी डी कोलिशन डिटेक्शन कोलिशन अवॉइडेंस सी डी इज कोलिशन डिटेक्शन यस बट व्हाट इज सी एस एम ए सो कैरियर सेंस मल्टीपल एक्शन स्लैश कोलिशन अवॉइडेंस सो वंस प्रोसेस इज गॉट सेपरेटेड इट गेव राइज टू सो मेनी स्टैंडर्ड्स सो मेनी प्रोटोकॉल्स बिकॉज computers have to be interconnected geographically distances are made Elect if you see because of this kind of things do not do not have a microscopic view of these things and say that oh i know this i know this this is what is no make an attempt to understand the implication of what is happening because csma cd has come because there is a wire that is going on because there is a electric pulses that is going on because we know how many of you know maximum power transfer theorem if you are from electronics you you know what maximum power transfer theorem what does it say when the load resistance will be equal to the impedance then the maximum power will be transferred from source to load yeah maximum power get transferred when the source impedance equals the destination impedance we say zi is equal to z z0 right now you see there is a physical wire connecting one computer to another computer it's a physical wire copper wire which get terminated with a resistor on the other side and there has to be the when i am sending pulses which are nothing but energy for the maximum amount of energy that the pulses can take and go there i need to have maximum power transfer theorem playing at so understand that one technology will or one kind of idea will push the envelope of so many technologies it's not a single figment of one thought process but it's an amalgamation of so many things pushing or pushed forward this is how sockets came into existence where they said that yes when there are two processes scattered or distributed across geographical distance then we need to have a separate ipc mechanism so that these processes can be in sync or the information can be sent so berkeley sockets they defined their own specification they told that sockets will be this this they also have written certain apis for example a server will receive the request yes a client can send the request so there are certain apis also that were standardized a server can accept the request because there is nothing like a client accepting request right client will go and say that hello i have some requirement then the server will say okay i accept the requirement it is like you go and say to the electrical company that i have a requirement and you insert your plug into the socket the electrical company never says that i need a connection to be established right you go and say that i want a connection to be established and you go and plug in the socket the power distribution company says that i accept your connection so they adopted the same terminology translated into apis now every implementation like accept receive send they created apis for that so this is how the whole socket mechanism has come into existence when these kind of things were coming into existence they also defined these terminologies like server and client now in our case when i say http server i as a http server have the complete implementation of the pages with me if you are a client you use a client software like web browser you type in a url the url goes dns will flip the url to certain ip address then that ip address will go to certain computer which is the server and as part of your request and now the request is codified into http packet where you say that i want index.html you say that then the server says that yes i have that page and it sends that page in case the server is not having that page how many of you seen that 
four not for four not for not found and all those things. So these are all the things that happen. In our case, the cha the roles are interchangeable. At some point of time, you will tell to the or you will write a code which will say thermostat. I am interested in getting this value. Give me that value. And the thermostat will say that some point of time saying that I want to be configured. Send me the configuration. The second case is a hypothetical case. But the point I'm trying to say is I am trying to fabricate certain context under which some can be or one entity can be a server or a client and the second entity can be a server or a client. So far clear? This is, whole, this is the whole funda. Now the biggest problem everyone faces. Once it's okay boss, you have given so much theory. But you know, the problem comes and stops at the code. It's always with the code. Because that is where these abstract ideas get codified. And they code they get codified in a language which are not very evident and not easy for us to understand. So for that, what you need to do is when you look at a code, at least in the, in the software that I have given, HTTP server, the names are properly written. The function names are properly written as to whether it is accepting connection or closing connection or opening connection. <coughs> Wherever you see the socket interplay is coming, you need to physically or you need to mentally understand that it has to be a UART call. So the first attack that you go and look at when you look at the code is remove all the utility functions. Imagine if you are a server, what will you first do? You accept a connection. Now, in our case, there is nothing like accepting connection because there is nobody sending to us. Rather, we say that if at all thermostat sends me something, I want to read it. So you are accepting connection or receiving connection, receiving data. Everything gets boiled down to one API from the UART, read underscore UART or whatever API. And whichever is the communication that you are doing, send to so-and-so client and all those things is UART underscore send. The first cut would be do not think about any error situation. Do not think about any corner cases. Assume that everything, sunshine and rainbows everywhere, start sending data and start receiving data. If at all that happens, what are those two APIs that I need to plug in? The only or the other issue that may come is the enormity of the code. How many of you felt that the moment you saw the code, the sheer size of the code itself made you to take a back step? Type me in the chat box. Because it's quite a good, huge amount of code. I agree to that. Because for the first time when I, I was Googling and I was I had to incorporate this web server into our device, I told, man, what is this code? So many files. Which file is for what? How many of you felt that the enormity of the code itself made you feel that how, how should I do it? Type me in the chat box. Initially, I felt, okay, Sagar felt, yes. So the simple thing is reject everything which are like utility functions. That's why I told yesterday all the string functionalities, all the encryption, authentication, base 64 operations because it's a numerical thing. Everything you regard, you discard. The only fire is HTTP core which implements the HTTP protocol. Go and read the HTTP specification. One of the biggest or good resources is W3C schools. How many know that? You can Google W3C and you will get it. So there, if you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. There you will get, I have typed in the chat box, there you will get decent explanation of HTTP server. Or you use a chat GPT and you say, tell me how HTTP server works 
imagine that I am just five year old or something, it will give you decent explanation. HTTP core dot C is the one which has the implementation. And in that, you don't have any accept. Even if that API is there, you can rewrite it saying that your Jasmine parser will say that I am starting the HTTP server and which is nothing but run HTTP server. So imagine like this. You remove that while one because we don't want a server to be continuously running, accepting connections. The first change. Are you with me so far? The, the, the process, what I am saying is if the server is running continuously so that any time whenever a request comes from a client that it can accept, we are not entering into that situation. So we are slightly deviating from the actual modus operandi of a proper server. We are saying that once you get an information from the client or the user, you just transform it into certain format. You just send it outside in an HTTP packet format. That's it. Don't assume that you are continuously running and you are watching the... It's not like a story. Yesterday I told that you are, you are not a shopkeeper who opens the shutter and infinitely waiting for the customer. No. It is something like you are a Swiggy delivery. I place an order. The shopkeeper... Remove the shopkeeper. I place an order. Then the shopkeeper... Yeah, bring the shopkeeper also. Not an issue. I place an order, the shopkeeper understands that there is an order and then and there he cooks the food and he sends. I put 25, I create it into JSON packet and I send it. The delivery by is nothing but your HTTP packet. Because the owner itself is not coming. Yes. There is a Swiggy person with that orange t-shirt, logo, stuff, whatever. It is nothing but now your HTTP protocol. Simple. So wherever you see now in the code, which is falling into certain category like <clears throat> accept and all those things, mask them all. There is nothing like run HTTP server. <coughs> Instead of that, you make a direct call. So what you need to do from your JSON code, you need to just pick up one functionality in the run HTTP code in the while one no opening socket, no nothing, all those things are gone. You, fig you will figure out somewhere information is being sent out. You use that API and you are done. But the important point is before being sent out, you need to create the HTTP packet. So I would say do not worry about the send operation or receive operation but rather focus on understanding the HTTP protocol and figure out the code or the files where it is HTTP headers and all those things. There you will see that how the information is actually being codified into HTTP protocol. Why? This is the reason. How many of you want to put this project in your resume? Type me in the chat box. After doing it, how many of you want to put this project in the resume? Okay, Ajay wants. Shubankar wants. Okay, most of you want that. When you go to interview, the first question or the most probable question or the knowledge area minus the implementation, which anyways you are going to speak, would be on your understanding of HTTP protocol. So the way HTTP server runs while one and all those things, anyways, by looking at the code, you got a sense of it. But how the protocol actually frames the packet, it is there in HTTP headers and all those other files. So if I were to be in your place, that I will put this project in my resume, and because of the keywords like I mo I changed an HTTP server, I, I, I created a lightweight HTTP server, I modified this thing, I, cre I modified this JSON parser, I did this IoT project, these are all keywords. I wrote a UART driver, 
you will mention all these things, right? So driver, HTTP server, yeah, JSON parser, these are all keywords. I, I tailored them for a small embedded system. All these type things are keywords, which will definitely bring your resume to the surface in front of people, for sure. In the interview, the game gets played like this. Out of 100 people, 99 people, first of all, they only they only don't understand how a server works. That it's a while one loop, it does all those things, so many things happen in that. No. They might be having an understanding of socket programming, where they say that, what are the standard socket APIs? Very popular question. Receive, accept, and all those things. Server has certain APIs, client has certain APIs. Simple theoretical knowledge. Later, you come and you position yourself as somebody who read the HTTP protocol, created the HTTP or fabricated the HTTP protocol. You explain that that hits the bullseye. You explain how JSON parser actually parses the file. Because the this, this is where the cream is, right? When the data comes, how the parser really parses the data? Because by a look of the format, I will say that this is JSON format or this is XML format. But the parser really does certain work. And the HTTP server as such is an entity which is dedicated to push the code. But the framing of the packet is more important. Clear? So spend time there because there you will get more bang for every second of effort that you put. Now the problem actually boils down to just saying that when I have this packet, you forget about complete HTTP core. HTTP core is actually the server implementation. That's why you see all the functions are like this, that and all those things. Once you have the packet, directly plug in into the UART send. Making sense? Are you all with me? Type yes in the chat box. Your problem rather should not be the server code, but it should be converting the data into HTTP packet. That's it. And here is the gain for you when you look at the HTTP headers code and all those things. It's all very, very beautifully written string operations. That's it. So what you are essentially doing is the string operation. And the authentication stuff, the encryption stuff, and everything are also split conveniently and they, they are relegated to the web sockets. So if you are not using web sockets, do not worry about authentication, do not worry about encryption. Only understand, I got this 25, how to, or I got this JSON data, if you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. How to put it into HTTP header. That's it. This theor The theoretical knowledge that we understood now with respect to the server is more than enough for you when you say with confidence that I know this stuff, this is how it is. I did not work on this, but I did these, these, these changes. More than enough. See, there are always two options in interview. Either you feel like a victim that you haven't done well and face all the questions that the person is saying. Maybe in the areas that you have not done, that is one part. How many of you want to be in this kind of situation in an interview? Or how many of you don't like to be in this kind of situation where you feel like a victim in an interview? Type me in the chat box. Do you want to be having a feeling of being victimized in an interview? You don't want to. The other side is make the resume in such a format that you write something that you have done and you take the advantage when somebody asks something that I haven't done that. Yes, it's obvious. 
If I have not done, I have not done. But whatever you have done, you have a story backing it. And you explain it. Are you getting my point? In this way, you will get certain experience. You will face certain questions where you will understand that, okay, these are the areas maybe I did not prepare. In the next interview, I will prepare. But you know what happens? Most of the early career people, what is the meaningless mistake that they do? They feel that they should know everything before going to interview. And they are so much harsh on themselves saying that I don't know this and all those things. They get tensed. They get, they have the self-inflicting attitude before stepping into interview. They lose the opportunity of getting valuable feedback and come out of interview successfully. Successfully doesn't mean always getting a job, but understanding that there is a gap. And the other way they, they harm themselves is they will put so much in the resume thinking that putting more will get interview called. And I have seen one person, he himself told. And he and I am, I am telling you, this person actually, after uh, three to four months, yeah, he lost the job also. I am I'm not able to recollect uh, whether he, that person is from uh, LinkedIn or my, my friend's cousin or somebody. He added so many skills. He went to the interview. The interviewer told, was I thought you are so much experienced and you know so many things. But in the first question only, I came to understood. I, I understood that you are just an empty vessel. But that interview was kind enough and he told that, no, no, you don't do like this. Put only what, what is that you know and all the things. So don't fall into the pitfalls and all those things. Write what you understood and what I told you is enough. If you know how to packetize, how to put it into JSON format, it is more than enough. Those functions are all string manipulation functions, which needs, which needs no big explanation. You go and do it, it's all array manipulations. You will simply understand, oh, this function, this is doing this, this is doing this, this is doing this. Just that the process will be, the algorithm that they have done is, key value pairs and one carriage return. Key value pair, carriage return. Key value pair, carriage return. And they keep on populating the header as many keys as they have. And all these keys are already part of a structure. So in a structure, there are certain number of keys. I have a for loop and I less than maximum number of keys or something. I go one by one populating. Next line, populating, next line, populating, done. So your whole string manipulation is going around this one. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. And for loop, that's it. So what your program at the end will be, one code which is understanding a number or something and put it into a string because json format is a string this string coming into another format where there are multiple strings and this string becoming a data this complete collection of string being given to you all that's it your project is nothing less than or nothing more than string manipulation but <laughs> this is a glorified string manipulation this is bahubali string manipulation okay and a very big canvas with a lot of rules and regulations associated with it. That's it. Now, I leave rest all to you because it now entirely depends on how much you dedicate and you care for your career and understand that if I know a code more better, I have better chances of faring well in interview, period. How many of you agree to this? If you know code well, you can play the interview very well. Rest all things does not matter. Because you are not applying for a leadership position. Yes. You are not applying for something where there is a lot of stakes. What you are applying is for a role where something is given to you and you are expected to do this. Do that. How many of you agree? Type yes in the chat box.
simple right so don't don't give it such a high pedestal position that it is so big and i have to stress out so much no concentrate on vital few than trivial many make your language competency and coding competency more stronger by these kind of activities and this code has very well written very well written string operations there is already a string dot h and string dot c somewhere and there is a http string dot h and http string dot c http string dot h and string dot c use the low level string operations that's it see if there is a string which is concatenating that's a string operation but in the http what i will say concatenate the headers key value pairs so for that for, for every time i don't need to reproduce the concatenate operation right i call a low level function which will concatenate and what does it require string one string two simple but http string knows what to concatenate it knows what it knows what the key it knows what the value that's it any questions spend some time i'm i'm pretty much sure you have uh, two more weeks you will definitely do it any questions no questions at least for one thing you should say answer questions yes or no questions also yes. else it is is it tough already i am no. speaking with some from black boxes i don't know what is happening there and silence is killing me it's like that silence when you apply for a job and you don't reserve hear anything from recruiter no question okay yeah no questions homes yeah read the code you will see you will see the things slowly unraveling yeah so this this video also uh, i will uh, upload and uh, ajay will share you the link yeah okay then have a great weekend and enjoy the code bye